Yes, indeed. Welcome back. This is the touchline. And of course, in our second session of this particular interview, we're talking about uh, with uh, Vijana Pamoja Amani, this uh, like a social group that works with the homeless. Remember that the Africa Women's Homeless Cup, the first edition, happened in Arusha. And Kenya really did put up a good performance and have this particular trophy. They came up with they came back with something, and this is the trophy that they won. They finished third in that particular championship. But this is just the first set of the guests. I'll be speaking to the players after this particular session with Nancy Njeri, who is a program director from Vijana Amani Pamoja, and Anne Doku, who is also a program officer from the same organization. Karibuni San on the touchline. Thank you and so it's much wonderful for to host us. you because uh, really, it's a homeless World Cup, you know, we, we, we know that it is really. Um, a World Cup like no other, right? It's not usual, mm. um, usual football. It's a mm. football with a purpose, mm. right? How impactful maybe has football been in helping advance the, the social message that you have? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, football, like any other sports, is a powerful tool that brings people together. It actually promotes uh, social cohesion and also social uh, inclusion. It's a tool that you can also use for... Uh, psychological and mm -hmm. also physiological health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the speaker who was here previously talked about uh, physical fitness mm -hmm. uh, that plays uh, a vital role in himself playing football. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to uh, mental or psychological stresses, participating in football or participating in sports actually uh, work or act as a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. The other bit is on um, social development whereby football mm -hmm. can be uh, mm -hmm. actually leveraged mm -hmm. uh, to create or to you know, uh, give out uh, messages on uh, reproductive health mm -hmm. and also to instill life skills, mm -hmm. to instill uh, skills like teamwork, mm -hmm. um, communication skills as well as uh, interpersonal skills. And in our context, mm -hmm. we use uh, football mm -hmm. as a tool, like I said, uh, to bring young people together mm -hmm. and to create a space where they can have candid conversation concerning mm -hmm. their sexual reproductive health, mm -hmm. uh, mental health, and also issues to do with livelihood. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now Ndoko Vijana Pamoja has been, how has it been for, for you dealing with uh, being engaged in this particular initiative? How has it been? How would you say um, are the, some of the milestones that have been reached? Well, I've uh, worked with uh, Vijana Mani Pamoja for close to 10 years now, mm -hmm. and uh, the experience has been quite fulfilling. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing uh, young girls and uh, young boys, young women joining programs which are mm -hmm. impacting their lives has, has been the most uh, fulfilling thing mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. So working with uh, these young people through mm -hmm. soccer, mm -hmm. through football and other sports, because mm -hmm. uh, in Vijana Mani Pamoja we also have mm -hmm. other sports, mm -hmm. has been, uh, uh, sports has been a tool mm -hmm. to empower them mm -hmm. uh, through different uh, uh, initiatives mm -hmm. which we have at uh, Vijana Mani Pamoja. Mm -hmm. And it has been a, a, a good journey mm -hmm. and a fulfilling one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and um, Nancy, maybe what are some mm. of the complexities of, of dealing the uh, dynamics of the plight of the homeless in Africa? Maybe you can pinpoint in Kenya in particular. Yeah, so maybe we can start looking at the uh, etiology of mm -hmm. homelessness. Mm -hmm. uh, w w what are the causes? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we are talking about uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. And currently, unemployment hovers uh, close to 30% uh, mm -hmm. in most African countries, mm -hmm. which actually it's a key driver mm -hmm. to poverty. So if you don't have money, if mm -hmm. you don't have money for uh, your basic necessities uh, to have a decent home so unfortunately mm -hmm. you'll be rendered homeless mm -hmm. or you'll be uh, you find yourself in a settlement that is not uh, decent which in this case mm -hmm. is also homelessness mm -hmm. then we are looking at um, you know natural disasters um, things like floods um, and this Actually, this happened in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So this also contributed to um, high levels of homelessness mm -hmm. in Kenya. And so also there's also issues to do with um, pandemics. For example, COVID-19, which again also goes back to uh, poverty. Because if um, I, I remember during COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, there was lockdown. People didn't have uh, access to economic opportunities. Mm -hmm. So most of them were rendered uh, jobless. 
and then they were also not in a position of course uh, to afford uh, decent housing and when you uh, maybe change the mm -hmm. lens a bit and mm -hmm. look at uh, women how women are also affected uh, in the case of domestic uh, violence mm -hmm. and sexual mm -hmm. uh, assault mm -hmm. also this is also a key mm -hmm. contributor Mm -hmm. to uh, you know homelessness yes yeah. and and Duku maybe at the recently held uh, Africa women's homeless cup I know that the several stakeholders were also in attendance maybe what are some of the the uh, points that came from the engagement that you had well the uh, Africa women cup mm -hmm. uh, had about uh, eight countries mm -hmm. uh, coming together bringing uh, women and girls together to, mm -hmm. to play mm -hmm. and to interact. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a lot of uh, collaborations, mm -hmm. uh, young girls and young women getting an opportunity to play, to display the, their, their abilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, a good platform for networking, mm -hmm. for uh, people from uh, different countries and different cultures getting together, mm -hmm. getting to learn from each other, getting to share experiences, and uh, learn different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also uh, um, an opportunity for, for, for the girls to showcase mm -hmm. their skills. Mm -hmm. uh, getting that platform, some of the girls were traveling for the first time mm -hmm. outside their countries. Mm -hmm. So getting that uh, chance to travel mm -hmm. and also to showcase before people mm -hmm. uh, gives them confidence and also uh, boosts the, their, their esteem. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was also um, uh, a chance for the project, uh, uh, Homeless World Cup project, mm -hmm. to be, uh, um, to get uh, visibility, because uh, the event was covered by uh, Tanzanian uh, mm -hmm. media houses. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it, it gave the, the project uh, uh, visibility uh -huh. across uh -huh. across Africa. Uh -huh. And it's not only the, the countries that is implementing the project, which is Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, mm -hmm. and uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, also, the other countries got to learn about the project, mm -hmm. and uh, s most of them showed interest in, you know, mm -hmm. um, scaling up mm -hmm. uh, the, the project to their to their countries mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, and maybe uh, Nancy, maybe you look at uh, the GBV cases as well as the uh, the number of the homeless in the country. Mm -hmm. What kind of the statistics, right? What kind mm -hmm. of picture do they paint, and what what what's the hope? Um, currently, I would say we have uh, close to a uh, hundred million mm -hmm. of people who are uh, homeless mm -hmm. um, then and when you look at also uh, uh, just decent mm -hmm. um, housing we have close to one billion mm -hmm. and uh, countries like uh, Nigeria and uh, Egypt actually are on the top list mm -hmm. but Kenya we are somewhere mm -hmm. we are somehow somewhere mm -hmm. and when you talk about um, you know gender-based uh, violence mm -hmm. it's um, it's 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 um, it's a very pervasive uh, human rights mm -hmm. uh, actually mm -hmm. uh, violation, mm -hmm. and the numbers again the statistics mm -hmm. are also uh, mm -hmm. staggering, on the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and Doku maybe uh, has the law been favourable in in making sure that um, the initial the agenda you know of, of maybe dealing with the GBV and the homeless been favourable. Or there are weak laws, and, and also the health system is no is not that proper. What what has what, what would be your take from that particular point? Well, I, I can say in our country, in our context, in, in our country, Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, the laws are there, but they are not uh, adequate, mm -hmm. and also there is a lot of uh, corruption mm -hmm. whereby people come together mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, collude mm -hmm. with, the, with mm -hmm. the lawmakers and mm -hmm. law enforcers mm -hmm. and ensure that the survivors don't get their justice. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say that there is a inadequacy mm -hmm. when it comes to law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in the context of uh, gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also in our health sector, uh, we have sometimes uh, health providers who are not well trained in uh, mm -hmm. ha handling uh, gender-based violence mm -hmm. cases mm -hmm. sensitively mm -hmm. and also uh, mm -hmm. adequately. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, especially women and girls, mm -hmm. don't get uh, the proper uh, treatment mm -hmm. or proper uh, or adequate uh, medical care when they go mm -hmm. to, to hospitals or to, to medical facilities mm -hmm. for help mm -hmm. when they get abused. Mm -hmm. And I would say, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 
in Kenya, we, we are not yet there. Mm -hmm. We are not yet there. Mm -hmm. we, we have a long way to go when it comes to policies and, and, and uh, uh, law enforcement. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And now what's your role in, in, in formulating the policies? As, uh, yeah. Well, we, we, uh, the, the project is advocating, mm -hmm. and even our organization, Vigana Mani Pamoja, mm -hmm. we are advocating mm -hmm. and we have campaigns where we invite uh, government officials mm -hmm. and we talk, we make noise, uh, in the streets mm -hmm. to create awareness for people to know because uh, first of all some people are getting uh, abused they are getting uh, gender-based violence and they don't even recognize that it's an abuse mm -hmm. so we are creating that awareness mm -hmm. and also trying to involve policy makers mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. uh, formulating laws and ensuring that uh, laws are implemented to ensure that uh, survivors get uh, get uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, when the people are looking for 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 justice, uh -huh. they, they get justice. Uh -huh. yeah, and of uh, course, you wanna to want to add yeah, to her point. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I want to add uh, on that, and it's it's a very interesting conversation on mm -hmm. enforcement, because mm -hmm. the there's actually currently there's a, <coughs> a national policy mm -hmm. on uh, gender-based violence uh, prevention and response, mm -hmm. but then the question is uh, the enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, is is the government uh, proactive when it comes to enforcement? Mm -hmm. And maybe I can just uh, add on two things from uh, what my colleague has said mm -hmm. and uh, one of them is um, the litigation process mm -hmm. uh, what happens to um, the witness uh, uh, of survivors of gender-based violence in <coughs> when the survivors are seeking for legal redress mm -hmm. uh, are there can they be housed because in in some cases there are threats these mm -hmm. are things that we've seen we've also work in the uh, corridors of, of justice for mm -hmm. justice for some of our participants mm -hmm. and also the issue of health mm -hmm. uh, are there um, psychological access like what my colleague has said are there any uh, psychological uh, facilities mm -hmm. that are uh, affordable mm -hmm. and that uh, survivors can access and perhaps I could maybe talk about what also we are doing as an organization in terms of uh, you know providing access to to the community and also mm -hmm. to the survivors on uh, gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. We have our mental health dubbed uh, NAFSI, which is actually open to our participants mm -hmm. and also open uh, to the public. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, with um, uh, either homelessness or GBV, you know, transcending the physiological, physical aspect, right? Yes. How, yeah. how, how do victims deal with the, with the trauma that comes after that? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's. Um, it's. How could. How can I put it? It's. Uh, I mean, effects of gender-based violence. Let's. Let's talk about first uh, the psychological mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. um, if you have been abused in one way or the other, mm -hmm. then you are predisposed mm -hmm. to uh, uh, psychopathology, mm -hmm. and we are talking about trauma, uh, PTSD. Mm -hmm. We are talking about uh, MDD, mm -hmm. major depressive disorders. We are also talking about. Uh, 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 general anxiety disorders, mm -hmm. these are just uh, some of psychological ailments mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, that one can be uh, predisposed. In addition, also, there's also high rate of substance abuse issues to do with addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And of course, to the footballers, when maybe you had um, having around, been around for close to a decade, you know, dealing with the same, maybe a number of uh, footballers or, or players have come and, and maybe they were in a in a, in not in a better place, but now uh, through your counseling and, and, and exposing them to football and what you can really do, have you seen some of them like have the, the change and, and see what you wanted to see? Yeah, sure. We, we have a department uh, like uh, my colleague has mm -hmm. mentioned, uh, NAFSI Hub, mm -hmm. which is uh, specifically catering to uh, mental health of mm -hmm. our beneficiaries mm -hmm. and also the community at large. Mm -hmm. So uh, through different initiatives, we've seen uh, beneficiaries uh, getting help, mm -hmm. getting support, psycho psychosocial support, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, getting out of uh, out of uh, uh, the issues they are going through. Mm -hmm. We organize uh, group counseling. We organize one-on-one -on -one counseling. We organize uh, family counseling, mm -hmm. whereby we invite them, and this we do for free, mm -hmm. so th they are able to access that mm -hmm. anytime mm -hmm. that they would like. Yes, to it, yes. Mm -hmm. and maybe um, stereotypes and norms and how this is a challenge in achieving the, the goal. Mm. Well, uh, gender, <laughs> traditional gender stereotypes and norms, they're, they're quite rooted, mm -hmm. and uh, especially in our 
our setup which is quite patriarchal mm -hmm. and uh, those uh, attitudes they, they uh, you know increase gender-based violence mm -hmm. especially against violence against women because mm -hmm. uh, the attitudes are um, favoring men mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. and uh, they're unfavorable to women mm -hmm. and that, that, that is one of the uh, um, issues which fuel uh -huh. gender-based violence. Uh -huh. So we are trying to, to challenge those uh, traditional gender norms uh -huh. and uh, stereotypes in different ways. Uh -huh. uh, one of them being creating the awareness for people to know uh -huh. what, what they are and how they're affecting different people. Uh -huh. And also we, we are trying to, 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 to make it uh, clear that uh, anyone can, be, can, uh, be in, uh, can uh, get abused can uh, be a, a, a survivor or a victim of gender-based violence, mm -hmm. including men. Because when you're talking about uh, gender-based violence, people mm -hmm. think you're talking about women alone. Mm -hmm. Men are also affected by, by gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we, we, are, we are trying to make it clear that uh, whenever people get abused, it's not their fault. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, people would say, because you, you dress in a way which is very revealing, that's why you are abused and they, they try to justify that's that. That's no reason, right? There is no reason. Mm -hmm. It's never mm -hmm. a justification mm -hmm. for gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And the challenge to upset the setup, how has it been? How has it been in, in upsetting the stereotypes and, and how has it been a challenge? Has it been easy? I know it's not easy to, to challenge the stereotypes and, and the gender norms and the traditions, right? Yeah, you're right, um, These are things that we've been socialized in. Uh, they are deeply rooted in our culture and at times also in our religious beliefs. So it's a process because it's all about, um, it starts with the mind, uh, you know, deconstructing our cognitive uh, perception on uh, gender socialization and again also reconstructing mm -hmm. how we, we view gender mm -hmm. um, <coughs> socialization and gender norms. And again, uh, like I said, it's a conversation that needs to, to continue mm -hmm. and it's a process. We are somewhere there, but mm -hmm. we've not had to jafika tayari. And also like what um, my colleague has talked about, uh, gender actually is, is gender-based violence is for both. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at violence against women, we are also, we try as much as possible to engage the other, um, the other gender, the men, mm -hmm. so that they, we, we don't see them as perpetrators, mm -hmm. but we also engage them so that they come in as uh, champions mm -hmm. uh, against gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. And then we have conversation with them on uh, toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. How does it? Uh, how does it look? Uh, and we also try as much as possible to encourage uh, positive. Uh, masculinity because toxic masculinity mm -hmm. also aggravates uh, gender-based violence and in this case violence against women. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes indeed and how proud are you of the Kenyan team that was at the uh, first homeless uh, Africa Cup? How mm -hmm. proud some members have been interviewing <laughs> some of the members yeah. uh, after we are done which we are almost in one minute or a second. How yeah. proud are you? Oh. We are very happy. <laughs> we were just dancing, scooty, all <laughs> traditional dances. Yeah, though we were confident with the team. Uh, yeah, we, we were very confident with the girls. And um, yeah, it's a celebration. We came number three, but for us, that was a big win. And uh, like what my colleague said, it was not only about uh, you know football, but there were also messages mm -hmm. on uh, gender-based violence uh, mm -hmm. and also messages on mental health. So mm -hmm. they came out as you know both winners. Mm -hmm. uh, on the field and mm -hmm. also off the field. Mm -hmm. yeah. And remember that they'll be going to the World Cup later on this year in Seoul, South Korea. Yes. Right? Yeah. Where your message will be amplified more and more. And we hope to see Absolutely. you again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And keep getting uh, expanding your network. Only Nairobi or you're found across the country? Um, currently, we are in Nairobi, but mm -hmm. we also work uh, at the outskirts of Nairobi mm -hmm. in Machakos. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Actually, we have a, a youth center mm -hmm. in um, somewhere between Machakos and Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, I would say in, Ka in Kamulu. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we are also in Kiambu, mm -hmm. but mostly I'll say we are in Nairobi. But uh, of course, in the near future, we'd also want to extend. Mm -hmm. And again, we also, we serve as a regional hub mm -hmm. for the Homeless World Cup uh, project. Mm -hmm. we, are, uh, we are taking lead and working with uh, Tanzania, mm -hmm. uh, Zambia, mm -hmm. uh, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and uh, us now, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Kenya. Yeah. yeah, this where this you know the homeless World Cup. What I love about it is just, just unique. It has organizations that help them 
uh, get to the players and get the right people, right? Yes. It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Thank right? Yeah. Nancy and Anne for gracing Touchline. Vijana mm -hmm. Amani Pamoja. Yeah. Uh, that's the organization that works with the homeless uh, team, soccer team in Kenya. And they'll be going to the World Cup later on this year. But coming up next, I'll be talking to the team that was in Arusha for the Africa Women's Homeless Cup. And they finished that. I'll be speaking to the players to get the experience, share the experiences at that particular tournament. Mm. Thank you and all the best in your thank endeavors. You, thank you. Thank you so much. We hope you will to accompany us to, to South Korea. You yeah. have the passport is ready. <laughs> what do I need? Uh, what's ready? <laughs> Just the <laughs> <a> passport <laughs> ready. Uh, it's yeah. ready. Anyway, yeah. that's how yeah. we do it. Coming up next is the players for the Kenya Women's Homeless Team.